My name is Cynthia Steele, and beginning with Wild Geese, I'll read some poems by Mary Oliver that were read for Poetry Parlay. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let that soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes. Over the prairies and deep trees, the mountains and the rivers, meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. Death at a great distance. The ripe floating caps of the fly Amanita glow in the pine woods. I don't even think of the eventual corruption of my body, but how quaint and humorous they are, like a collection of doorknobs half moons, and then a yellow drizzle of flying saucers. In any case, they won't hurt me unless I take them between my lips and swallow, which I know enough not to do. Once in the South, I had this happen. The soft rope of a water moccasin slid down the red knees of a mangrove. The hundreds of ribs housed in their smooth white sleeves of muscle, moving it, like a happiness toward the water, where some bubbles on the surface of that underworld announced a fatal carelessness. I didn't even then move toward the fine point of the story, but stood in my lonely body, amazed and full of attention, as it fell like a stream of glowing syrup into the dark water, as death blurted out of that perfectly arranged mouth. The journey. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began. Though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles, mend my life, each voice cried. But you didn't stop, you knew what you had to do. Though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough, and a wild night, and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds, and there was a new voice which you slowly recognized as your own and kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Sleeping in the forest. I thought the earth remembered me. She took me back so tenderly, arranging her dark skirts, her pockets full of lichens and seeds. I slept as never before, a stone on the riverbed, nothing between me and the white fire of the stars, but my thoughts, and they floated, light as moths among the branches of the perfect trees. All night I heard the small kingdoms, breathing around me the insects, and the birds who do their work in the darkness. All night I rose and fell as if in water, grappling with a luminous doom. By morning I had vanished at least a dozen times into something better. An afternoon in the stacks. Closing the book, I find I have left my head inside. It's dark in here, but the chapters open their beautiful spaces and give a rustling sound, words adjusting themselves to their meaning. Long passages open at successive pages. An echo, continuous from the title onward, hums behind me. From in here, the world looms a jungle redeemed by these linked sentences carved out when an author traveled and a reader kept the way open. 
When this book ends, I will pull it inside out like a sock and throw it back in the library. But the rumor of it will haunt all that follows in my life. A candle flame in Tibet leans when I move.